Breaking news from Chicago. Judge set them free. Fire her now. Two teenagers pleaded guilty in the sexual assault case of a 15-year-old girl. A crime in which the perpetrators stream live on Facebook in March of 2017. It was a horrendous crime that tortured a girl while showing it live to many viewers on social media. Not only was she abused in person, but there was an audience as her suspects had no regard for her life at all. A shameful time in humanity in which the defendants should have been punished to the highest degree of the law, but that's unfortunately not what happened. The judge, in this case, allows sick suspects to walk freely upon this earth where they might search for another victim to torture and maybe worse. In a plea deal with Cook County prosecutors, the 15-year-old suspects pleaded guilty to a single count of child pornography and will only be sentenced to probation. Judge Patricia Mendoza said Tuesday she would decide the length of the punishment by their January sentencing. Both suspects had initially been charged with aggravated sexual assault in the manufacturing and dissemination of child pornography. The Facebook Live sexual assault sent shock waves through the victim's West Side neighborhood. The girl is a high school freshman and was reported missing after her uncle dropped her off at her Lawndale home. The next day, her family became aware of the video and took screenshots to the Ogden District Police Station. What is the most tragic part of this whole ordeal is the fact the video was watched live by over 40 Facebook users and not one of them called authorities nor notified Facebook of the attack. Was this the friends of the attackers? Were they in on it? Did they enjoy watching someone torture a helpless teen girl? Since they didn't notify police, then should they have been prosecuted too? for not doing the right thing and allowing a girl to be tortured and abused live on camera? It was confirmed that the Cook County judge sentenced both teen boys to only five years of probation. The judge ordered them to register as sex offenders for the aggravated sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl which they broadcasted live on Facebook. This means that the sexually deviant teenage attackers will walk free where they have the full ability to find and assault another victim. There's a chance that the girl who was attacked could see these sick people in public and be attacked again. Probation only works if the people follow it and there's no guarantee that anyone follows their probation. Not just that, but probation should not be the punishment for a crime in which two boys sexually attacked a helpless girl and streamed it live on Facebook. That is sick and twisted on so many levels. The only acceptable punishment is a hard time in prison. USA Today reports. If you see a crime being committed on Facebook Live, do these things immediately. Ryan W. Miller, USA Today published 2.42 p.m. ET March 22, 2017. Chicago police say dozens of people watched a suspected gang rape on Facebook Live, without reporting it to authorities. An earlier version of this video mistakenly stated who was watching the live video on Facebook. Dozens of people watched as 15-year-old girl in Chicago was gang raped on Facebook Live, yet no one called the police. The video, which has since been removed, is the second story to make headlines out of Chicago about a crime taking place on the social media live streaming service. In January, police charged four people for hate crimes after they allegedly tied up, beat and tortured a special needs student while Facebook live audience watched. As Live grows in popularity along with the potential for harmful uses of the tool, police say it is important for users to know what to do if you see a crime or other dangerous activity on Facebook Live. We spoke with the Chicago Police Department, which offered some tips for what to do if you see something bad happening on social media. Call 911. If someone is in danger or a crime is being committed, call the police immediately. If you can't tell where the video is taking place, it's even more crucial that you reach out to police so they can respond. Look for descriptive details. Even if you don't know where it is happening, providing key details about what you see can help save law enforcement time in tracking down the crime. Can you see a street sign or a unique characteristic of a person in the video? Tell police whose live video it is, what you're seeing and any information you may have about the people in the video. Report the post to Facebook. Users can flag videos for Facebook in order to bring harmful behavior to the company's attention. The company says it has a system in place to review questionable content around the clock. 
Facebook can then try to get in contact with police accordingly. Facebook on Tuesday declined to respond to specific questions about the incident, including whether the alleged assault was reported by users. Crimes like this are hideous and we do not allow that kind of content on Facebook, the company said in a statement. We take our responsibility to keep people safe on Facebook very seriously and will remove videos that depict sexual assault and are shared to glorify violence. Record the video with your phone. The person who is going live has the ability to end the stream and delete the video at any point. Capturing your own video of the crime can help police if the person removes the stream. Taking a screenshot on your computer or phone of the live video and the person's profile can also help, Chicago police said. Don't share the video. Further publicizing harmful content may encourage the person to continue committing the crime or harming others. While you may think that sharing can help spread awareness, it may also put victims in more danger. The person streaming the video may be seeking attention. Don't contact the person if they're committing a crime. Chicago police said they want to make sure all evidence is preserved properly. Reaching out to the person could prompt them to delete the video. What if someone is not committing a crime, but is doing something else that's concerning? The behavior you see on Live may not warrant a response from police but should still be addressed. You can help a person being cyberbullied or expressing suicidal thoughts by acting quickly. Again, report it to Facebook. Facebook has strict guidelines around cyberbullying and it removes content that appears to purposefully target private individuals with the intention of degrading or shaming them, according to its Community Standards webpage. The website has also worked to better its response to prevent suicides on live. If a video is flagged, Facebook can send a message to the user that directs them to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and other support organizations. Facebook plans to integrate its existing suicide prevention tools into Facebook Live and Messenger to better help people in distress. Video provided by Newsy News Look. Tell a friend or family member. You may have friends on Facebook that you're no longer close to or haven't spoken within years. If you see one of them being cyberbullied or expressing suicidal thoughts, it can help to tell someone you know is their close friend or relative. The friend or family may have missed the live stream and don't know that the person is going through hardship. Telling someone can be the first step to getting a person help. It's a sad day when a teenage girl is raped and broadcasted live for everyone to watch and no one calls the cops. Then to make it worse. The rapist suspects get five years of probation instead of jail. That is an absolute insult to the victim, her family, and all of us. This was a deal set up by the prosecution, but the judge has the right to hand down any judgment she wants. It's disturbing that a female judge would let two rapists get off this easily. Please share if this judge should be fired, be fired.